On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, Elon Musk goes on a holiday tweet storm and reveals some interesting new information, including confirmation of a Tesla pickup truck complete with a big new idea. Plus, my 2018 predictions for Tesla, an Easter egg that existing Tesla owners won't want to miss, and more. Happy New Year, friends. Ryan McCaffrey here with you alongside, of course, Daisy the Boxer Puppy, who is presently gnawing on, uh, what is that over there? That is an actual small block of wood. Yeah, she she just, she has to have her teeth and mouth on something all the time, and it's just that point in her development as a five-month-old puppy. So, good to be with you. Uh, we say goodbye to 2017 here. I suspect most of you are probably going to listen to this in 2018, but it is being recorded here on uh, the afternoon of December 29th, and it will be posted for everybody on the 31st, the usual Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. But uh, so either, you know, Happy New Year either way. It applies either way. Uh, this is going to be a really fun 2018. I want to talk a lot more about that a little bit later in the podcast. I've got some sexy predictions, S3XY, some Tesla predictions for 2018. I will say, I mean, it, before I get to that, it really will, though, be the year of the Model 3. I mean, 2018 is the year that the entire company really existed to get to. I mean, yes, the Model 3 was launched in 2017 and, and delivered in some quantity, but really 2018 is is when when everything really starts and I think when everything's really going to change. And, it's, you know, you're going to start seeing them all over the place in 2018, no matter where you live. Uh, so I, I just think 2018 is going to be the year that things really start to change for the better because of the Model 3 in the automotive world. So first up, got some news to get to this week. Thankfully, I have to say, I have to hat tip to Elon Musk. He bailed me out because <laughs> I expected this was going to be a very, very slow news week. And in fact, I would have had next to nothing had he not decided to hop on Twitter and just start start answering stuff, start talking, uh, which of course we know he is wont to do from time to time. Uh, he was in a tweety mood and now we've got some stuff to talk about. So, uh, I figured we'd break down, just go over everything he said, give you my take on it. And then, uh, of course, if you have a reaction, you're always welcome to call in on the Ride the Lightning hotline. I'll give you that information later on. But earlier this week, let's get started. Elon tweeted, quote, Wanted again to send a note of deep gratitude to Tesla owners worldwide for taking a chance on a new company that all experts said would fail. So much blood, sweat, and tears from the Tesla team went into creating cars that you'd truly love. I hope you do. How can we improve further? And he ends there. So he instead, instead of just, you know, sending out the thank you, he actually invites uh, some feedback here. And to his credit, he then monitored and responded to some of that feedback. So he started replying. First up, on the status of Autopilot 2 features, for instance, automatic lane changing is supposed to be part of the enhanced Autopilot suite. Elon says, quote, Sorry for the delay. We have the most advanced AI neural net of any consumer product by far, so it's going through exhaustive testing. The results are blowing me away, though, and I think you will have a similar experience, end quote. Now, it has been suggested before, and we won't know if it's true until it actually happens or not, that the AI learning here, the fleet learning with, uh, with these enhanced autopilot features is going to be exponential. In other words, that once Tesla can break through and get that multi-camera autopilot feature set deployed, that the development and progress of it is going to, to iterate and happen very, very quickly. I sure hope so. Also, um, pardon me if I've said this before, but I, this, this got me thinking on a, on a sort of a related topic. I really believe that full self-driving, level four and level five self-driving, I think that's going to be the next sort of point of attack, the next sort of quote-unquote talking point for the Tesla Fudsters, 
as you guys know, I like to call them. I think that's their that's their next big uh, thing to try and burn Tesla at the stake with in 2018. You know, it's if you look back over the years, they've they've moved from one uh, I, c- cause, and I use that in air quotes, from one cause to another. Oh, you know. Tesla only exists because of a government loan. You remember the $410 million DOE loan as part of the uh, initiative to get more clean energy programs going in the U.S. So that that was, you know, the, the Fudsters liked that one for a while. Well, that loan, of course, was paid back in full with interest years ago. You don't hear about that argument anymore because it doesn't exist. Then there was, well, you know, these cars are too expensive. Okay, well, here's the Model 3. Check that one off the list. Oh, the, they can't produce the Model 3 in sufficient quantities. They'll never build enough. Well, that's in the process of being solved right now. And once that is solved, very, very soon, I think that's going to be the next thing that those people move on to, uh, whether they're, you know, they're shorts, they're competitors, whoever they are. I think it's the, oh, you know, Elon said they would have full self-driving and they can't do it. It's never going to happen. I, th- I think that's going to be the next, the next thing for them. Uh, and, you know, like most things, Elon, I, I have every confidence that Elon will, and the team, will get it done, but it probably will just take longer than Elon will publicly say it does. That seems to be the MO, you know, the dream big, and uh, he, sets, he sets very aggressive goals for, uh, for completeness on these things, and and usually they do happen, just not quite as quickly as he says they do. So, all right, back on topic here. Someone said to Elon, give me a setting to not have Bluetooth auto connect to my phone. It steals calls from the house when my wife walks by the garage with her key. Also annoying all the time for audiobooks. Elon simply saying, quote, done. So that, uh, look for those sort of uh, user convenience quality of life kind of uh, software updates to be coming soon. Now, on this, I've heard of people's Teslas unlocking and locking frequently because their garage is near their living space. You know, maybe just there's just a wall, a thin wall between it. And, you know, they, and then they walk by with their Tesla key in their pocket. So I would think that a, some sort of geofencing toggle might fix that in the Tesla. And we'd, of course, we know that Tesla's are very capable of geofencing because they do it with the air suspension setting. Like the car remembers where it's supposed to be uh, moved up to a high suspension setting, or I guess a, a low one if you if you specifically toggled that. But um, you know, so for a geofencing thing, yeah, I would think if that could be done, where the range that the car responds to for the for the locking and unlocking of the key shrinks to almost zero when you're at your house so that the car would only respond at your home if you were, in fact, right next to it. So good to see that Elon will uh, have the team address that. Here was the next question and answer, as it were. Someone said to Elon, make it possible to turn on heated window, meaning the windshield, uh, and I suppose the defroster as well, via the app, and possible also to turn on the heated seat and steering wheel remotely as well. And Elon said there should be in the next update. So this is uh, really, really good news for those of you who are uh, who are enduring winter climate right now, a cold winter climate, cold winter weather. And I have to say, though, I'm kind of surprised that that wasn't in the app already. If you'd have asked me, you know, because I, I actually, <laughs> this is dumb, I have the Tesla app on my phone. I've had it on there for years, but you literally, you can't do anything with it unless you have a, my, uh, my Tesla login with a car. (laughs) So, uh, so I can't actually know what's in the app with other, you know, of course I research and find out online, but I would have guessed that those things would have already been in there. So regardless, glad to see that they are imminent. And the next thing, a person makes some uh, bullet points and says they're looking for, they want to see an automatic rain sensor, all eight cameras as a dash cam, uh, ambient light settings, such as the uh, ambient brightness and the footwell and the front and rear seats, sign recognition, stop, yield, etc. The music get quieter when opening all the doors. 
I thought the Model S did that already too. Uh, and a, and then the, this person adds a disco mode, ambient light to music beat with an on off and a brightness setting. And Elon replied to this and says, was going to say we'll do all but the last, meaning the disco mode, but that last one sounds like good, cheesy fun, smiley face. And uh, in fact, he also later replied to the dash cam thing again with someone else separately, indicating that it's on the to-do list. Now, uh, I want to zero in on that because I hope the dash cam feature moves up the priority list at Tesla because, uh, well, number one, it's not the first time Elon has mentioned it on Twitter. So that's a good sign that it's already, it's not just coming onto their radar now, but I have to say, you know, I, I've, keep up on on everything going on in the, the Tesla Motors Club forum. It's a great community. And it's a great way to sort of get, hear from owners and, and non-owners alike. It, it adds a good perspective that I can't necessarily have since I don't own, the car, own a Tesla just yet. But in a thread on the Tesla Motors Club forum over the past week or so, uh, somebody posted a dash cam video. They had a dash cam installed in their Model S. And uh, the... The video was on a on a you know sort of rural highway like a desert highway, so it's just one lane in each direction with just a double line divider, and it was through a curve. And for whatever reason or another, the person coming in the opposite direction was just did not hold the curve and was coming straight for the Model S driver, and uh, the Model S driver reacted and. Uh, uh, she actually veered right, and and it, and it created a glancing blow off of the sort of her front left fender. Well, actually, I guess both cars' front left fenders, and she she was able to walk away. And apparently, the other driver was unharmed as well. And it's still unknown, sort of, why that person did that. Whether he was under the influence of some sort, distracted uh, somehow, or what. But the this the the uh, the, the driver she had dash cam proof she that she could give to the insurance company to the police to say that you know she was in her lane and this other car just veered over and there was nothing she could do about it except what she did which was to veer right and prevent a more serious head-on collision so uh i i have not had a dash cam on my to-do list for my model 3 it's just you know it's it's not cheap it's not like ridiculously expensive but you know it's another expense and I'm also, I'm such a neat freak uh, with my cars that I don't like things being in it. I don't like third-party things being in it, whether it's like uh, a cell phone mount or a, or a you know, non-OEM satellite radio system, you know, anything like that. I, I like it to be the way it's supposed to be. I'm just, a, I'm just weird like that, I guess, maybe a little bit of an OCD thing. Uh, and so the same kind of has applied to me personally with a dash cam. Like, I don't want to install this third party thing that's going to be like invisible in the car. But that video made me rethink it because, boy, if something like that were to happen, it is, I mean, first of all, it's it's so great that the most important thing is that the the that sh- the woman the driving the Model S, she, that she was uninjured uh, and the other driver as well. But Boy, it's it's good that she has video proof to say that there was there's inconclu- rather uh, indisputable evidence that she is not at fault that that it was the other driver. So uh, it really made me rethink my personal dash cam philosophy and and sort of my thoughts there. But I would love it if if uh, Elon could move that whole dash cam system up the priority list for Tesla, so that you know maybe sometime in 2018 that can come online for all the Autopilot 2 cars. And quite frankly, I don't see why it couldn't be done for the Autopilot 1 cars as well, just with the obviously the forward-facing camera, maybe even the rear-facing one too. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I just seeing that, seeing someone else's just unavoidable, there was an actual, there was nothing she could do about it in the, if you see this video, just an unavoidable accident, uh, having the dash cam, I mean, that's... Uh, that's that's a really helpful thing in, a, in an unfortunate situation like that. So Elon t- and anybody from the Tesla team, if you are listening, please try to escalate the the uh, dash cam feature for the car up the priority list. Anyway, next up, from a Tesla owner lamenting the terrible web browser 
that's in the Model S and the Model X, because of course the 3 doesn't currently have one. Elon replied and said, yeah, it's terrible. Had to upgrade the old Linux OS and a bunch of drivers first. Major browser upgrades coming to all cars in a few months. Note, will be slower at first until code is optimized, end quote. Well, uh, as much as I, I don't want to be too pessimistic, but we have heard this before. And what that would lead me to believe is that this is clearly, you know, I'm not saying the dash cam is or isn't, but the web browser seemingly is not very high on Tesla's priority list right now. And quite frankly, I have to say, that's probably okay with me. I, uh, you know, it's, it's not something I think a lot of owners necessarily miss. If I had one, and I, I wouldn't use it too often. Uh, you obviously can't use it while you're driving. Uh, the passenger could use it and, and show things you could, I mean, there's definitely an application there for, uh, kids in the back, you know, for, for, a, for a car full of people for, if you're commuting, you know, you're probably not really using it too much, but it's, I don't think it's a particularly huge omission. And as I mentioned a minute ago, it's, it's actually not on the Model 3 at all right now, if you weren't aware of that. There is no dash uh, web browser on the Model 3 as of now. But uh, And I wonder if the reason for that might be because of this. Because Tesla thinks, well, it's just, it's below, it's, it's at a subpar standard right now. Let's not even bother putting into the Model 3 uh, until we can get it up to an, an acceptable level. But uh, if... If Tesla does redo that, which they, they are, it's in progress, as Elon says, when that do-over for the web browser, that upgrade does happen for the S and the X, I wonder if then, if the Model 3 will get it, or if that's going to be a feature that's held exclusively for the higher-end Teslas. There's no reason for it not to be included on the 3, but you know, you never quite know, because, uh, well, you, you never know how... Certain folks might think, and they're, well, let's just leave that on the expensive cars. But I would, I would think Elon's not really the kind of guy to to withhold a, a more or less quote unquote free software feature like that just because you have a, a car that doesn't cost quite as much. Following up from last week, Elon again hinted at the map and navigation changes to come, saying that quote vastly better maps slash nav coming soon. Uh, we've got a couple calls. Uh, you know, you recall last week I solicited ideas from you guys about what a major upgrade to the navigation system might look like. Stay tuned for, to the Ride the Lightning Hotline section of the podcast. And some folks did call in with some pretty good thoughts on that very topic. On rain sensing auto wipers, which was touched on earlier, but he just said, quote, coming very soon. Presumably not in the next update. Because if it were in the next update, he probably would have said it's in the next update, <laughs> which is which is what he had said uh, for one of the other things there. So uh, the the, um, the heating, you know, the remote heating access for the seats and steering wheel, the pickup truck. This is the last big thing, and this is what warrants some interesting discussion, both uh, hopefully from me and from you guys too, to call in on the hotline. He says. Someone asked about the pickup truck, and Elon said, quote, I promise that we will make a pickup truck right after Model Y. Have had the core design slash engineering elements in my mind for almost five years. Am dying to build it. And he added, when someone asked about what sort of, what size pickup truck we might be talking about here, Elon said, quote, similar total size as the Ford F-150 that the, uh, the questioner the person on Twitter had had uh, posed to him. So, so similar total size as the F, Ford F-150, maybe slightly bigger to account for a really game-changing, parentheses, I think, feature I'd like to add. Now, I've said this before. I am not a pickup truck expert. I've never owned a pickup. Um, I'm just, it's not really a world that I think about that I'm involved in. I've always had cars. Uh, so... What would be a game-changing feature in, a, in an electric, in a Tesla pickup truck that would necessitate a slightly larger size than an internal combustion engine pickup truck, such as a Ford F-150, which is obviously a full-size truck? I, uh, again, as a non-pickup truck expert, 
have been racking my brain on this one, and I'm having trouble coming up with what that might be. Uh, you know, whether it's some sort of solar charging with the bed, you know, if the bottom of it is, if the bed is solar panels, I know that, that, that's been, that's probably a dumb idea because that's been pretty summarily written off as just not providing nearly enough juice to make it warranted. But yeah, I'm, I'm having, uh, I'm at a loss for words on this one. So I know this has come up before when the pickup truck came up a while back, some, uh, some very pickup savvy folks called in with, with, uh, some very good ideas. I would love for folks to call in again on this one. What, my friends, what would be a game, a quote unquote game changing feature that uh, Elon Musk could be talking about that would, again, that would necessitate the elect the Tesla pickup to be slightly larger than the ICE competition there. Give me a call. The toll-free number for the Ride the Lightning Hotline, uh, what, unless you want to just record something on your smartphone and email me that recording, the email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. Alternatively, you can call in anytime and leave a message on the Ride the Lightning Hotline at toll-free 1-888-989-8752. Uh, so I want to hear your predictions for what you think that uh, game-changing feature might be on the future Tesla pickup that will be coming after the Model Y. For now, though, uh, I wanted to move on to, I guess, what is my primary segment for this week, which is my 2018 sexy Tesla predictions. Sexy because it's S3. X and Y will go in that order. First, I want to start with the S then. I believe, let me, let me hear me out on this one. Uh, I was having lunch with a, with a uh, friend of mine who, uh, who, who knows people. <laughs> and he, he just, he kind of just stayed totally straight faced. He didn't want to give anything away, but it was, I, I enjoyed testing this theory out on him. Uh, I think that we're going to get a full Model S redesign in 2018. And let me explain why. So first and foremost, the the next the 2020 Roadster and the Model 3, they have raised the bar for range, for electric vehicle range, uh, period, and certainly for a Tesla's range. I think that you can look for a 400-mile Model S uh, because a 130 kilowatt hour battery pack has been rumored that is 30% larger than the 100 kilowatt hour pack and 30% above the 335 mile range that the 100D gets is you guessed it a bit over 400 miles it is 435 in fact got to figure that they might use the new 2170 cells that are going into the model 3 that have that new battery chemistry in them as well. I also think this fully redesigned Model S will have a 0 to 60 time without the performance version, mind you, just the 100, the, let's call it the 130D. I think that'll have a 0 to 60 time in the low threes because the 100D, after a hardware and a software upgrade, is now down in the mid threes, 3.5 three, for the 100D. Of course, the P100D is down at about 2.3, 2.4 seconds, which is utterly insane, or rather ludicrous, of course. But uh, so, yeah, there's if there's a more power, there's more juice in the pack for the car to pull from. There is no reason why it could not perhaps go a bit quicker than it already does. On the, the topic of a 130 kilowatt hour battery, I think we'll see the 75 kilowatt hour battery go away. And I think we'll see two Model S uh, range variants. I think that it will be. They'll. I think they'll get rid of the badging the way that they have done for the Model Three. And I think it will be the Model S standard, which will be a hundred kilowatt hour pack, good for that. You know, three hundred thirty plus miles. And I think you'll get a Model S long range, which will be the four hundred plus mile pack, the one hundred thirty kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, because what that would do is really repositions the Model S from a range perspective, which is, we all know, it's so crucial in the electric vehicle space as customers are 
dipping their toes in the EV waters. Range is a huge issue. It is arguably the single biggest issue to get people to willingly transition from ICEs to EVs. So uh, the this, uh, this Model S that I think is going to happen would reposition the S as just clearly ahead of the 3. Because the 3's got a 220 mile and a 310. And the 310 mile Model 3 has a base price of $44,000. A Model S presently, base Model S, the 75D is about, you know, I don't have it in front of me, but it was about 74 grand, I believe. So $30,000 more approximately for a car that has a 259 mile range. That does not, that just doesn't make sense anymore. There is a, that doesn't add up. There's no way that can last because yes, the Model S is bigger. People might just want a bigger roomier car with the hatchback twice as much cargo volume in a Model S than a Model 3. But really, when you get right down to it, I think there's a pretty strong argument to be made that paying 30 grand more for a car that has 50 fewer range miles just does not make sense on any level whatsoever. So I think we're going to see a 100 and a 130 build as a standard Model S and a long range Model S. Uh, I think that car is going to have uh, a redesigned interior. We know that they hired the Volvo interior specialty uh, specialist. rather. Uh, presumably that, that gentleman is tackling the redesign on the interior. Uh, I think we will see a Model 3 style dashboard in the uh, redesigned Model S. Instead of being 15-inch landscape display, I think it will be a 17-inch landscape display. And here's where, here's where we have a little fun. I think the Model S will have a heads-up display. I, don't, I do not think it will have the binnacle, the, uh, the instrument cluster in front of the driver. I think it will have a HUD that has, it's like super sexy and cool in typical Elon Musk fashion that displays speed and, uh, you know, other relevant, interesting auto uh, information, whether it's navigation based or, or autopilot data, uh, you know, information, what have you. I think that's where the HUD comes in is when the dash, the, uh, you know, the, the binnacle, the instrument cluster goes away and you've got your large horizontally oriented landscape oriented 17 inch landscape display, and then you've got the HUD in front of you. I will note, to sort of corroborate my argument here, that if you look at pictures of the 2020 next-gen Roadster prototype, that car has a huge, gorgeous 17-inch curved glass screen. You heard me talk about it uh, after it was revealed. That car does not have an instrument cluster in front of the driver. So just a little food for thought there. I think the redesigned S will get the Qi wireless phone charging in the center console. And I think part of that interior redesign is going to give the car extra leg room in the back, making it even roomier and sort of, again, separating it from the Model 3. It, the S already has more, more rear leg room than the Model 3 does, but it's not a drastic difference. I think the, S, the redesigned S will be able to achieve that because if the new S has the Model 3 style dashboard where it's that very minimal dashboard that's pushed forward. Because remember at the event, Elon talked about, uh, actually, I guess it was, no, it was back at the original reveal, March 31st, 2016. Elon talked about on stage how uh, because there, there's no engine in the front, they, were, they pushed the cabin forward into where the, the, the firewall would normally be in an ICE car. Which it, which allowed them for uh, larger interior volume overall. So if you apply that to the Model S, I think you're going to see that that'll get you more legroom in the back and more of a, again a premium luxury full size sedan kind of feel and effect there. Now to the exterior, I think we will see an exterior redesign on the Model S. I think it'll stay in the family. It'll look like a Model S, but I think it's going to be a more drastic facelift than the, the actual, the almost literal facelift that we got in spring of 2016 uh, with the nose cone being removed and the, the that front nose being redone uh, on the Model S. I think we'll see 
way better headlights. Uh, probably, quite possibly, the laser lighting up front that's been that's sort of at the cutting edge, and I think you'll get some really just stunning top end LED lighting in the back of the car for the tail lights. And I think you know if you look, if you look at the styling, um, you know the, the Model S and its core design, both inside and out, are six years old at this point, really, and the the design language. Tesla's own design language has been pushed forward by the Model 3, by the next-gen Roadster, and, you know, the rest of the industry is beginning to go electric, too. So look for Elon to keep Tesla way, way ahead of the pack with the Model S. You know, look, take a look at the Roadster, if you, if you haven't lately. Just Google image search it right now if you're not driving, and uh, take a look at it. And just, you know, you can see, like, it is, it has Tesla family styling, but it's, you know, it's it's pushed forward by a few years. So I think the redesigned S will reflect that. Just a, a, you know, even more sort of aggressive stance and look to it, particularly at the, the front end and the the flares and the fenders. I, I, I do think that's, that is my prediction for a redesigned Model S inside and out. I do think the price will likely go up a bit with all that cool new stuff in it and the bigger battery options. But... They've got the Model 3 on the lower end of the luxury market, so they've got their bases covered really there. I think they can get away with raising the price of the Model S to have it be a better, longer-range vehicle. Okay, so we move on to the 3. My Model 3 prediction here uh, is sales-based because we, we really, obviously, we know everything else about the car I think the Model 3 will outsell the Model S and the Model X combined in 2018. Now, if you think, well, Ryan, that's a horrible prediction, of course that's going to happen. Well, I mean, we don't know it's going to happen, but it is obviously the plan. That is the plan is to have the three outsell the other two cars always beginning in 2018. But, you know, the, the production ramp is probably going to prevent Tesla from going quite full steam ahead in 2018, at least for all of it, they're ho- they're going to get there hopefully at some point. Remember, Elon had suggested that they were they might hit a run rate of 10,000 cars per week by the end of uh, the year, by the end of 2018. But if you look, you know, conservatively, even if Tesla only does 2,000 Model 3s manufactured per week for the entire year, that's about 100,000 cars, and the Model S and the X combined should be between 100 and 120,000 cars in 2018. So uh, if Tesla were to achieve their, uh, successfully achieve their ramp and get to 5,000 vehicles per week, Model 3s, by the end of Q1, if they hit that, that means we could be looking at 400,000 Model 3s in 2018 or more. So odds are it's probably going to be somewhere in between the 100,000 and the 400,000, but in any case, I think that's a pretty safe prediction that uh, the three will outsell the S and the X combined in 2018. Model X, I actually think the Model X will be relatively unchanged uh, because the car is much newer than the S is, but the thing is, if the Model S is going to get a full interior and exterior redesign, complete with the Model 3's dashboard and the Blades uh, air vent system that is so slick and futuristic on the 3, well, of course, the X, the S is going to get it, which means, of course, the X would have to get it as well. So, because uh, what that does, you know, you, you've got to, the X has to match what the S is doing. And in this case, the S has to get that air blade system that the 3 has. And, uh... What that also does is allows Tesla to streamline costs. If they have all three vehicles using the same HVAC system, and uh, that that allows them to save a lot on their, or at least save a, a, a decent bit on their production costs by allowing them to, to use a lot of the same parts. I, of course, also thus think that the Model X will get the same landscape orientation 17-inch touchscreen which, uh, you know, to again, keep pace with the S as well. But what that would also do is allow the Tesla software team, the OS team, 
to streamline their development a bit because they could start transitioning everything to a landscape orientation. Yes, obviously they have uh, a large, they have a hundred, what, 150 plus thousand uh, cars that are, that are in the fleet, that are in service, that are on the uh, portrait orientation screen. So they're going to be supporting that for quite a while. But uh, I think moving all three primary cars, the the S3 and X, to a landscape orientation uh, on their, their touchscreen display just makes a ton of sense there. Externally on the X, I don't think they'll do too much. Again, it's, it's a newer design than uh, what the Model S's design was. Also, sales are still trending upwards on the X, and they've only just gotten all the kinks out of production in the X. As Elon has described many times, it's, uh, he calls it the most complicated vehicle in the world to, br- to build. So I don't see them doing a ton externally, uh, but you know, I know I just said, of course, I, I was just talking about how I, I don't think Elon's, uh, or rather that Tesla is a company that really sits around idly on their thumbs, but the X literally has no competition as of now. Uh, as, as of now, and in the immediately foreseeable future, you know, Audi's got a, an electric SUV in the works, but, uh, and I guess that the Jaguar I-Pace is, I, I guess that's kind of an SUV. It's kind of a crossover, but, and, and also the fact that Elon has already said repeatedly that Tesla crammed in every cool feature they could think of right at launch rather than adding them in over time as it would uh, make more sense from a production perspective. So externally, I I do think a slight touch-up could be in order on the X, mainly with the headlights and the taillights, which I I talked about with the S, but I think that's the easy way to go. And if again, if my Model S prediction about that comes true, the X would basically have to follow suit there. Finally, a Model Y prediction for you. I'll just throw this out there. I think the Model Y is going to be announced in Q4 of 2018, and here's why. I think once the Model 3 ramp is sorted, the buzz will continue to build as cars uh, will be on the roads, and they're just going to be getting pumped out and pumped out, and the chatter will build and build. I mean, we've seen, if you've been following Tesla for a while like I have, you've witnessed this, even if you haven't quite realized it. Like, if you think back, you can see, oh, yeah, like, as the S started to get around more and more, like it, it the, the momentum built, the buzz built. You started to see more and more of them. One neighbor would get an S, other neighbors would see it, and soon that neighborhood would have more S's in it. That is going to happen with the Model 3, in my humble opinion, except on a much larger scale. A much larger scale. So, uh, a, as a result, I think that uh, interest in Tesla will be higher than ever in 2018 because the Model 3 will uh, fuel that. That that's what, you know, the cars are going to be getting all over the place. Buzz will be high. Uh, interest in the company will be higher than ever. And so newly interested Tesla fans that become aware of the company via the Model 3 will, will look at the car and ask, well, what about a crossover vehicle? And the Model Y will be the answer to that question. I think Tesla will use the Model 3's positive momentum to help build momentum for the Y. You know, if they unveil it, they've got to get the ramp sorted. They've got to deliver a bunch of cars, cross all, you know, get a lot of people off this waiting list and get cars into those people's hands. Once that has largely, hopefully largely happened in Q4, I think Tesla says, okay, here's the Model Y, and then they'll start accepting reservations and the floodgates, they'll get a ton of reservations for that car on the back of the heightened awareness and on the back of the what will what is already positive response to the Model 3. Well, there you go. I'm always curious to hear your predictions as well. Feel free to call them in on the hotline. Again, you can always record something on your smartphone with your voice recorder uh, on the phone and email that to me. Send it to Tesla podcast at gmail.com, or you can call it in, leave a message toll free on the Ride the Lightning hotline, which we'll get to in a minute. Because there's just one last thing I wanted to mention this week. If you are a current Tesla owner and you have not seen this already, get yourself a, a little 
a little better late than never holiday spirit for your for your car. I presume you've you've already got and and uh, and are, are coming off the tail end of your holiday spirit. But if you haven't already had that spirit for your car, well, here's your chance. The, if you have the latest firmware in your Tesla, use your voice command to say "ho ho ho" to your car, and watch what happens. Uh, I'll just tell you what happens because it's really good. It turns your car icon in the instrument cluster in front of you into Santa's sleigh. Uh, it's a this cartoony rendering of it. It's really adorable. And the Tesla, of course, even goes one better than that. If you in, if you say <laughs> Uh, if you say, ho, 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 not funny, it adds snow. It makes it snow on your, on your instrument cluster. Also, by the way, it, it not only turns your, your car, uh, your rendered car there, uh, into Santa's sleigh, but it turns the surrounding cars that the cameras and sensors see when you're driving into reindeer, which is pretty great. So take a look at that. That's pretty awesome. And that wraps it up for the news slash my predictions for this week. I'll be right back right after this with some excellent calls in the Ride the Lightning hotline. Time for the Ride the Lightning Hotline, last one of 2017. If you've got a question, comment, or discussion topic for the podcast, uh, send it my way. Record it on your smartphone and email me the file. Teslapodcast at gmail.com is the email address there. Or you can use the very easy toll-free Ride the Lightning hotline, which can be found at 1-888-989-8752. Again, that's 1-888-989-TSLA. And if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. Let's kick it off with Bruce in Amarillo, Texas. Uh, Bruce, what have you got? Hello, Ryan. This is Bruce from Amarillo, Texas. Well, I got to drive a Model 3 yesterday. I am not a current S owner, but I do have a reservation. Uh, not an employee either. So I did wait in line first day. But here is how I got to drive one. Uh, a guy named uh, Yo Yo Zhu, and it is pronounced, it, it, it looks like it's spelled U U X U E, is his name. Um, but he's going around the country giving out test drives in his own personal car. All he asks for is a donation for his time and expenses, uh, which I was more than happy to do. But here in Amarillo, Texas, he stopped at the supercharger. Just me and a small handful of people were there. I got to drive it, and I would say I've driven all three. I've driven an S. Uh, I've driven a 75D. I've driven a uh, Model X uh, P100D ludicrous and then uh i drove the model 3 and i'm of the s and the model 3 you know i prefer the driving handling characteristics of the model 3 and of, of course the upgraded user interface sure is nice but uh uh super guy the guy's really generous with his time and he uh is trying to keep a tight schedule to travel across the country but uh his name is yo-yo and i am a uh, incredibly grateful for his time and uh, allowing me to drive it. So anyway, you might look him up. Thank you, Ryan. I enjoy the show. Thanks for the report, Bruce. I did mention him, uh, or rather Andrew from Ottawa did back on episode 124 just two weeks ago. I'm really, really glad to hear that he's a legit guy uh, and that he was so generous with both his car and his time. And, and I'm also glad to hear, of course, of your positive impressions from your test drive. I, I would have to drive the S and the 3 back-to-back -back before I could personally pick which one I like better from a handling perspective. I have driven both, but I'd want to do it in kind of a back-to-back -back way to really uh, get a fresh comparison. But I, the, at the very, very least, the Model 3 definitely hangs right there with the Model S, uh, thanks to, largely, I think, the big weight reduction, you know, it being a, a bit of a smaller car. So hopefully the weight for your Model 3... Won't be too long, Bruce, and it's cool you got to do that. Uh, good stuff there. Next up is Jerome talking 
wheels and uh, how your car is represented in the GUI. Jerome, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, this is Jerome up in Northern California, just a little north of you. Um, I was wondering, with surrounding this discussion about snow tires, um, is it easy for the user to change which wheel size is on the Tesla through the GUI? Can they go in and change 18-inch wheel to 19-inch wheel, etc.? I did a quick search, and I'm not finding an answer to that question. I'm going to assume that because Tesla puts different size tires on the car that it's obviously a variable, but from a user standpoint, can they do it? I hope you have the answer. Hope you're having a good holiday staycation and uh, love the podcast. Thank you, Jerome. While this can indeed be done, Tesla is the one that has to do it. End users do not have the power to make any change to the color or wheel type uh, that their car has in the Tesla GUI. I can see why Tesla maintains control of it, but at the same time, does it really matter if the car in your GUI doesn't look exactly like your car? Like if you want to represent some other way, like you want to pick a different color or a different wheel. So like, does it really matter? I mean, it does seem like a pretty, I'm not com really complaining here. I'm just sort of a, just observing that I mean, it seems like a pretty trivial thing that Tesla just might as well let you go ahead and customize, but uh, I, I would suspect this is one of those things that's probably never going to change unless you tweet it at Elon, he happens to see it, and he happens to agree with you after thinking about it. All of which, I might add, are highly possible. We have seen those things, we have seen things change because of that exact uh, process. So uh, you never know. Give it a go. Thanks, Jerome. Next up, Kevin in Park City, Utah. Uh, following up on the discussion from last week about snow tires and wheel sizes. Kevin, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, real quick, just wanted to comment about your last um, episode regarding snow tires and the maps. First of all, regarding snow tires, yes, if you have the ability, get a second set of rims to put snow tires on. It's a lot easier on your wheels when you're not pulling the rubber on and off one set of rims. I run 21s in the summer. Um, with you know summer tires and then switch over to 19s in the winter with proper snow tires on them. It makes a world of difference. And I live in Park City, Utah, where we get quite a bit of snow. So believe me, you want snow tires. And then second, regarding the maps, um, actually Electric commented or posted about this over the summer that there was a map navigation update coming. It's obviously a little later, been delayed, but um, they said that... It looks like they're going to vector-based maps versus rasterized maps, which if you use the not Google satellite image version of the maps in your car, will make a huge difference on how fast the maps render on um, on the display. Anyone who uses a, or has a S or X is well aware that sometimes the navigation are slow to load the tiles. It's you know kind of sluggish. Um, the Model 3 apparently has fixed this with newer hardware, but um, so any speed boost to the maps will obviously be greatly appreciated. I can't speak about the um, updates regarding the actual navigation inside of the maps. Um, someone on Tesla Motor for Tesla Motor forums apparently has had access to them for a while. One of the hackers and said that they load much much quicker than uh, the rasterized maps, which are. Um, you know, pixel for pixel. So when you zoom in, they, they blow up versus vectors, all math-based. So hopefully we get a nice speed boost out of that. I uh, hope everyone has a happy new year and uh, good day. Thank you, Kevin. So at the very least, speed is a primary benefit of the uh, new navigation system. And that's got to be music to anybody's ears because nobody likes it when the map takes forever to render, which I agree it definitely does on the S and the X presently. I wonder if they might also push the new nav system to the Tesla smartphone app too, you know, because you could, theoretically, you could plan trips from there and you could push those trips to your car. I mean, I think that'd be pretty neat. And on a, by the way, on a tangentially related note regarding stuff that I'd like to see the Tesla app do, I really hope that when Tesla Music launches, we've talked about that, that is more or less confirmed that that's happening. I really hope that you'll be able to train your Tesla music app. In other words, you know, get it, tell it which, what music you like, train it and listen to it via the Tesla smartphone app outside of the car. Because uh, I, I tell you, I would happily pay a small monthly subscription fee for that 
because it could replace my Pandora subscription and make my in-car music experience better by letting me fine-tune my personal playlists and station preferences when I'm out walking Daisy or, or I'm riding a train or something like that. So here's hoping that Tesla is uh, really thinking ahead with regard to Tesla music and, uh, of course, their navigation system as well that's currently getting ready to roll out. Next, our friend Lawton from Chicago He's got theories on the navigation upgrade as well. Lawton, you're on the air. Hi, Ryan. It's Lawton from Chicago. Why don't you share my thoughts on possible features in Tesla's next generation navigation system? I think the key feature will be providing real-time info on the world around you. What will make this unique to Tesla is the ability to incorporate data from multiple sources, such as Waze, and most importantly, data from the Tesla fleet. The navigation system will allow you to arrive faster to your destination by providing up-to-the-minute info on traffic conditions and best alternate routes. Safety would also significantly increase. Using data gathered from the various sensors of the Tesla fleet, drivers could be warned about poor weather conditions, such as slippery surfaces from ice, rough roads from potholes, and poor visibility from fog. But what if the upgrade was not only software, but also had an optional hardware component? That dream component could be the long-awaited HUD. Imagine an augmented reality overlay providing real-time data on the world around you. Light years ahead indeed. Happy holidays, and thanks for your continued dedication to the Tesla community every week. Look forward to your thoughts. Happy New Year, Lawton. As usual, I like your thinking on this. I could definitely see their proprietary new nav system feeding in and incorporating fleet-gathered data. That makes a lot of sense and would not only set Tesla ahead of the pack in that department, made possible by that fleet learning, which of course no other current competitor can do, but it would also, as you said, save drivers time and possible hazards as well, if I could actually speak today. (laughs) And regarding the HUD, well, now you've heard my predictions from earlier in the show so maybe we'll both be uh, right on this. Maybe if the new S and the NX do indeed have HUDs in 2018, your nav idea could factor into that. Great stuff as always, Lawton. Thank you. Let's go now to Pete from Carmel, who wants to take uh, that sort of thinking to the next level with his idea for what could be part of this navigation upgrade. So Pete, you're on the air. Hey, Ryan, this is Pete from Carmel. Happy almost new year. I heard your podcast last week and you mentioned that uh, Tesla is coming out with some modifications of the nav system. I I think that's pretty exciting. And I suspect it has something to do with Elon's um, ownership of SpaceX. Uh, He certainly has first dibs on sending satellites up into space and now that satellite technology is becoming cheaper, I have a suspicion that we're talking real-time, uh, very uh, precise geolocation technology combined maybe with some crowdsourcing technology. As we have more and more Teslas come online, especially the Model 3, you can imagine that the cars will be able to sense uh, you know, traffic jams and so forth in terms of just the car's speed and direction. And this will be likely sent back to Tesla's, um, you know, data warehouse and can be uh, then funneled back in real time warning drivers or maybe even automatically redirecting them. Uh, Sounds pretty exciting. I bet it's something in that realm. I'm certainly not an expert, but I'd love to hear what your other um, uh, callers would have to say about this. Thanks again. Boy, do I love that idea, Pete. Tesla has leveraged SpaceX in the past and continues to do so for both materials and knowledge, and materials knowledge, quite frankly. So there's no reason why they couldn't launch a satellite array up with a Falcon 9 rocket and just crush everyone else's automotive navigation capabilities. No other car companies, to the best of my knowledge, uh, he says with with a, a little bit of sarcasm dripping off of it, have a rocket company at their disposal as well. Great stuff, Pete. Thank you very much for that. I want to close out uh, the final call in Ride the Lightning Hotline for 2017. Uh, Pardon me. I I hope you won't find this too self-serving, but Gus uh, is a fairly new listener, and I always like to welcome in the new listeners. He had some very, very nice things to say about last week's episode. Uh, So, Gus, 
you're on the air. Hi, Ryan. My name's Gus. It is Christmas, and I just finished listening to your episode 125. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for doing what you do. I just found out about your podcast through the iPhone app podcast. And I my first episode was 124. And uh, I just heard about your story on the 125, about Maggie and all that. And it really shows... It really goes to show that you care for for your audience because you're be, you're being so transparent with it, and that shows that you really care. So I just want to say thank you for being you. And <laughs> even though I don't know you, and I just found out about you, you found a listener for for life. Um, I'm about to head to a Christmas party, so I'm gonna let go. I wish you the best. Keep your head up. Uh, and the Halo music is absolutely amazing. <laughs> that is beautiful that you're using that as your musical breaks. Uh, love your show. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Bye-bye. Gus, welcome to the podcast, and thank you so much for calling in. First, I'm so glad that you picked up on the theme and bumper music. Because the thing is... Marty O'Donnell, who is the composer that wrote all of that, uh, is, in my opinion, a musical genius. So even if you don't know Halo, and obviously, unlike my day job at IGN, not all of my audience here with Ride the Lightning knows Halo. So, uh, but regardless of that, it's, it's still, whether you know Halo or not, it's just incredible music from an unbelievably talented composer. And uh, to everything else that you said as well, just just thank you so much for those kind words. It, it really does mean a lot. I know you said you don't know me, you just started listening, but if you did, and you know, you'll get to know more about me as you listen longer, you'll learn that I'm very, very much an honesty is the best policy kind of person. I just, I've always been that way, and it's a mantra that, that quite frankly has always served me well in both my personal life and my professional life. I just, I prefer to live by it. Uh, it, it is uh, something I believe in. So uh, thank you so much for your kind words. And, and happy holidays and happy new year to you as well. And to everybody who's called in this year. And of course, everybody who's listened. Uh, what, a, what a great year of Ride the Lightning hotline calls every week. Just good stuff from you guys out there every single week. And I remind you one more time, uh, let's keep it rolling into 2018. If you want to call in with your Tesla comments, questions, discussion topics, reactions to my 2018 predictions, reactions to another caller, etc., uh, give a call anytime. Again, you can use the built-in voice recorder, the voice memo uh, on your smartphone, record something and email me that file. Uh, the email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. Alternatively, you can use the Ride the Lightning hotline, which is very easy and very toll-free. The number is 1-888-989-8752. Be right back with some parting thoughts and uh, some mentions right after this. Got a nice handful of new Patreon producers this week, so I want to start there. I want to mention these very, very kind uh, and generous folks who are supporting my efforts with the podcast on Patreon. Uh, they're supporting at the $20 level or higher each and every month. So uh, first I'll say hi to the newest Patreon producers, a welcome back to Harold Plug, uh, and then hi to Kenneth Martin, Michael Callahan, and Rome Strack, welcome to all of you. And a continued, of course, hello to uh, the longtime Patreon producers, Jeff Bartram, Paul Hussey, DJ Harbaugh, Pete White, Wolfgang Obergen, George Cassiopo, David Brander, Jonathan Wales, Michael Lucas, Alexi Heft, Lisa Kaz, Michael Opre, Logan Willis, Matthew Para, Michael Lester, Robert Maracle, John Lasher, Jason Chalukas, Emotion Rentals, Richard Ouellette, Sean Fournier, Tim Hyde, Marcus Mayenshine, Lee Sweet, Lars Hoffman, Orion Coates, Aaron Greenberg, uh, Peter Chalet. Thank you very much, Peter, for calling in and giving me the correct pronunciation on that. I confess, I I never would have gotten Chalet. I'm I'm very sensitive to. I try. I do my best with names, and usually I get pretty close. But uh, thank. You, I really needed the correction from you on that one. So thank you. 
Uh, so thanks to all of those folks. Again, it's uh, if you are if you are uh, an enjoy- enjoyable person. That's not didn't come out right at all. If you enjoy this podcast, aside from the parts where I can't talk, and you might want to support me on Patreon, uh, the uh, amount of time and energy that goes into this thing, take a look at the Patreon page if you get a chance. It's at patreon.com. That's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. Uh, Abstract Ocean uh, has been selling the Tesla puddle lights for your Model S, X, or 3, available in the logos of any of those cars or the actual Tesla T logo. Plus, they've got a ton of other accessories for both you and your car, uh, most of them, a lot of them lighting-themed, but they've also got uh, 17-inch dashboard, uh, you know, center screen, screen protect- protectors as well, like you put on your phone. Check all that stuff out at abstractocean.com. And if you've never shopped there before, you can get 20% off of your first order by using the coupon code RTL Podcast at checkout. RTL Podcast is all one word there, RTL Podcast. Uh, and then, of course, Immaculate Reflections. A lot of folks starting to take deliveries of Model 3s here in the Bay Area, specifically Bay Area and LA, are where they're really uh, happening first. So if you plan on babying your Model 3, loving it, protecting it, having it for a long time, as I do. Uh, all of those apply to me. You may want to consider some either a paint protection film, paint correction, uh, ceramic coating, all that stuff, any or all of it, mix and match, uh, do it a la carte, whatever you want to do to help protect your car and keep it looking beautiful. Check out Immaculate Reflections, the Bay Area's premier detailing solution. You can find their website at IR detailing.com. You can also find them on Yelp and Instagram at immaculate underscore reflections. I personally recommend looking at the Yelp page because then you get to see uh, sort of real feedback and real and pictures of customers' cars that, uh, that they've worked on over there. So check that out. If you are purchasing a Model S or Model X, through January 31st, that is the that's going to be that's the current iteration of the referral program. I have I have speculated on past episodes that maybe the referral program is going to end entirely uh, after this one ends in on January 31st. We'll see about that. Uh, but for now, if you are buying a, a a new S or X in the next 30 days, you can get free unlimited lifetime supercharging by using my cousin Pat's referral code. You can uh, punch this into your web browser, ts.la slash Patrick5008, or just give that code to your sales advisor if you're working with an in-store sales advisor from Tesla. You can follow me on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Uh, you've heard it a couple times already before, but the show's email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. I will tell you I read all of them, even if I don't quite get a chance to respond to every single email, but I do see them all. Uh, if you're not already subscribing to the podcast, I would recommend and hope you might consider doing so because then it just gets fed to you automatically. You don't have to go out and manually download it each week. You can subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, or uh, pick up the RSS feed or individual MP3 downloads from the podcast hosting site, which is at teslapodcast.com. Libsyn.com. Libsyn spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N. I think that's it. I think that's it. That's a wrap on 2017 for me. Looking forward to getting started with Ride the Lightning, starting with episode 127 in 2018 in a week's time. So uh, let the, again, this is going to be this is the real year of the Model 3, 2018. So a lot of us, hopefully myself included. We'll be uh, will we'll become Tesla owners, many of us for the very first time, and it's going to be a very very special year, a very fun year. Our our time together, my friends, is just getting started, because as I talked about, I think on last week's show, you know, think it, it's a whole new ball game once we get our cars, because you know now you're following along and it's you know and it's it's fun, you know, the anticipation, but when you get your car. You're a part of it. You're you're a, you're more you're a more, let's say, directly connected. Because you're, you're a part of it now. 
but uh, you know, by having the car, you you're a part of it in a in a new and different way. So uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun together in 2018. I look forward to it. I can't wait. Uh, so thank you all so much for a wonderful 2017 with this podcast. You heard me talk about it last week. If you stuck around to the end, that you know I needed it last year. Last year was not the easiest year. Um, meaning this year, 2017. But in any case, I'm looking ahead to a really, really great 2018. I can't wait to get started. So I will see you back here at the usual time, 9 a.m. Eastern time every Sunday, or if you're a Patreon uh, backer, a little bit earlier than that after the show gets recorded. So see you next week, friends. Happy New Year and happy electric motoring.